As Games Workshop prepare to release their most expansive, audacious and ambitious campaign so far, the Psychic Awakening, let us look at the most hated of all races or factions in the setting, the Dark Eldar. I shall be prognosticating what I like, would like to occur. Remember, this is not what I think will happen. It is what I feel could happen. I claim now insider knowledge, and this is merely what I feel could happen, to bring about the most dramatic and exceptional story so far. This is my top three units or things that could be introduced to bring about a truly dramatic and brilliant story. They are known by many names. The Drukhari, the Dark Eldar, the Elegethinius. Even in the grim darkness of the future, this faction is the closest one will ever come to pure evil, and by far the most hated in all of the galaxy. The Tyranids, the Great Devourer, may be their most feared, or perhaps the Necrons hold that mantle, but the Eladreth Aeneas, the Dark Elder, are by far the most hated. To quote, the Dark Elder are the living embodiments of all that is wanton and cruel in the Elder Eye character. Highly intelligent and devious to the point of obsession, these piratical people revel in the physical and emotional pain of others. For feeding upon the psychic residue of suffering is the only way they can stave off the slow consumption by the Chaos God Slanesh of their very souls. The Drukhari, particularly their warrior castes, are tall, lithe, white-skinned humanoids. The alabaster skin is death-like in its pallor, for there is no true life-giving sun within their dark realm to provide color. Their athletic bodies are defined by whipcord muscles, shaped and enhanced until they are physically stronger on average than their craftworld Eldar counterparts, as the Dark Eldar prize physical and martial prowess highly. Yet, for all their physical beauty by human standards, the Dukari are still repugnant monsters. When viewed with the witch sight of a psyker, the Dark Eldar's black souls are revealed, for they eternally thirst only for the anguish and torment of other thinking beings in order to fill their own infinite emptiness. My number one choice. A quote before we name them. The figures had the, the distinct curving forms of wraith guard and wraith lords, the animated guardian constructs built by Craftworld Eldar to carry the souls of their dead. Motley squeezed through the cracked wall in a daze. As the trapped souls within sensed his presence, the swell of grieving mind voices grew more frantic. Motley resolutely tried to block them out. With closer examination, he recognized that the machines were not craftworld wraithguard and wraith lords. They embodied many of the same aesthetics, but had undoubtedly been constructed by Cormorite hands. The ordinarily fine, clean lines of the craftworlders' designs had been weighed down with masses of additional armor and weaponry. Many had some of their long limbs amputated in order to keep them quick and agile, despite their extra burdens of blades and energy projectors, sacrificing their traditional compact elder-like forms for greater performance. Everything about the Cormorite copies seemed to add a vicious tension to the original designs. There were clusters of spirit stones embedded in the construct's carapaces. Each of the war engines had a dozen or more of the glowing gems sunk into their gleaming metal bodies around their foreheads and shoulders. Motley knew that every one of the stones contained a soul caught at the moment of death to keep it safe from the clutches of she who thirsts. The spirit stones represented a most despicable theft from their resting places, an act that went beyond grave robbing to the literal enslavement of the dead. My number one prognostication is the introduction of castigators into the Drakari line. For GW love to reuse parts and models, and a conversion kit would be all that is required to open these figures to the Drakari. My number one, castigators, being either Wraith Guard, Wraith Blades, Wraith Lords, even a castigator of Wraith Knight. In two, I will put my thoughts concerning the potential plot of the Elder Eye Civil War into a separate video, but I'll state now that I believe that Elder Aeneas will burst from the Dark City and start to take a place amongst the stars of the galaxy in real space, fleeing the opening of Cain's Gate in Cormorar. As such, they will no longer require to fear the use of psychers as much as they did. Fear they will, but not as much. Nor will they have the choices to ignore their power. If the Psychic Awakening is to change the setting as much as Games Workshop claim, then their use by the Eladrith Aeneas will be inevitable. 
They are masters of torture. They will be able to condition the psychers quite easily, like slaves, like dogs, like animals, to do their very whim, to perform any action, to be almost like a Catan to the Necrons, utterly enslaved by them, despite being far more individually powerful. My number two would be enslaved Psyker Thralls, and let's be honest, We've all seen Tukari or Eladreth Aeneas slave models before. They'll just make them better this time. My final choice, my number one, will probably be of no surprise to anyone. In a period where Galliman, the Primarch, where Magnus, where Mortarion astride the battlefield at the whim of any player, then of course there has to be a return of one particular figure which is no longer in the Dark Eldar or Tukari line. One which I shall introduce. Of course we all know who he is. The first Archon, the Living Muse, Lord of the Cabal of the Black Heart, an undisputable master of Cormorah. Possibly the most evil thing in the entire grim darkness of the future, joined only with perhaps and only perhaps Urien Rakath, the great homunculus lord. He is the usurper who began as a slave and lied, connived and murdered his way to being the leader of the first cabal, the cabal of the Black Heart. He overthrew the existing order and gained power by raiding real space and capturing a starty ship, which then drew in the space marines, and in their ire and their fury they devastated Cormora, destroying the nobles, and in the confusion Vect assassinated any that were left alive that had not already been exterminated by the Salamanders. This individual gifted another Archon a black hole in a box. A fun when he opened his present. This individual unleashed the power of a captured son to destroy the factions of rebels that had risen up to kill him. He later mocked his own death by the hand of truly vile creatures and then returned now knowing exactly who was for him and who was against him and who was loyal and who was not. And when he did return, he called himself, he dubbed himself a living muse and basically a living god. Yes, my number one pick for the Drukhari is the return of Azdrubal Vect. Kane's gate has broken and will do so again. Will Vect order the evacuation of the city? No. But will he secretly move into real space unannounced? I think so. My top pick, Astrobel Vect. A sumptuous figure. A powerhouse on the board. I really hope it's coming. <laughs>